all right so today uh, we are going to see one of the important concept uh, in postman and which is uh, chaining so chaining of uh, apis so in the last class uh, we have seen how we can define the parameters or how we can define the variables in the different levels like global variables and environment variables collection variables local variables right different level variables we declared and we have defined and also we have seen how we can use those uh, variables or how we can access those variables uh, in our request url and along with that we also seen how we can write a scripts to create a variables right the same concept uh, we are also going to use uh, in this chaining of apis now let us understand what is chaining of apis and the most important concept i will show you multiple examples then you can understand better so what is api chaining sometimes what happens is when you send your any api request okay so when you send any uh, api request we will get some response right one second just a moment give me a few seconds okay so sometimes uh, when you send any request let us say pin is not working okay so sometimes so uh, when you send an api request right so normally what happens is we will get some response so when you send a request, we will get some response. And this particular response, we will use as a request. Again, it will become an input for another type of request. So for example, I have a two different APIs which are created. So in the two different APIs, so one API is sending some response and the same response we will use as part of the request in the next another uh, type of request. So that is basically called as an API chaining. So let's say I have API 1 and let us say API 2. So there are two APIs. Now here I'm sending some requests to this API. We will get some response from the API. Now this response will go as a request or that response will be part of your request to the next API. And then again, this will give you some other response. So this particular uh, concept is called chaining, chaining of APIs. So the response of one API becomes the request of another API. So not exactly complete response, at least some data we have to use from this response as a part of request to the another API. And this concept is called chaining of APIs. Okay, so there will be some dependency between multiple API requests. So in those cases, we can capture this. So how we can achieve this whenever you get a response, so we need to store this response in different variables. Okay, so we have to store this response in different variables. And once you store this response in the variables, and we can use those variables as part of the request, as part of the request. For example, let us say this IP is returning some data or some response. Let us say we need the ID for that. We need ID from the response. So we can store that ID in some variable. And then we can refer that variable as part of the request in the next API. Okay, so for example, here we are creating some user. And once you create a user by sending the request, which is created as user along with some ID. And if you want to display the data or if you want to delete or update, we need that ID. So that ID we will take as an input as part of the request. And then we will perform the other operations. So this particular concept is called chaining. So now let us see how we can implement this chaining by taking multiple examples. So first of all, uh, let us see which simple example, which is student API, which we already created. And then we will take another type of API and then we will show you. So first of all, let's see uh, student API. So in the student API, let me just go back to Postman tool. And we already created earlier student APIs. Now let me just take the copy of the student APIs. How we can do it copy. So we can just take a duplicate option here. Okay, so student APIs copy. And I'm just renaming this. And student APIs chaining. Okay, 
Okay, so here uh, I'm going to take a few requests and get single student, get all students, create student, update, delete. So multiple things are there. So I just want to delete some of the requests we don't need and create a student update is also not required. I'm just removing the update and uh, get a student. So first we will post the student and once you post a student, we will get the ID. And by using that ID, we will try to display the student data. So get single student. So we will call that request by using that ID. And after that, we will try to delete the student. So currently I have a three request. One is uh, create a new student and then get a single student and delete the student. So these are the three different type of requests I'm going to send. Now, let me put this post request at the first, uh, first beginning part. So first post will execute, then get will execute and then delete will execute so here my requirement is when i send this uh, create a new student uh, by passing somebody so which will create an id for us and that particular id we will use as part of request in the next request that is get single student and delete student okay so this is a chaining process now let us see how we can do this and before that let me just run my student aba locally so one second. So JSON files and I also have a student.json. So make sure you have this particular file. I think Hilary already shared this. Now we need to run this API. So I say JSON server and then students dot JSON. So now it is started running. Now, let us see how we can do the chaining process first. So when you send this particular request, by passing this, uh, when you send this request URL, this is a post request, means which will create a new student and with this data. So once you create a new student, which will return the ID for us, as part of response, we will get the ID. And that particular ID, we have to store in some variable. Okay, we have to get the ID, we have to capture the ID from the response then we have to store that id in the variable so where i can do that so where i can do that in the test tab right go to the test tab and here we can capture the id from the response so how we can capture the id from the response and how to first capture the response in the last classes we have seen if you want to capture this entire response in a variable and how we can do that go to the test tab because test script will execute after sending the request right so once your request is sent, once you get a response, then the test script will execute, not pre-request script. So pre-request script will execute before sending the request. So once you send a request, once you get a response, then test uh, request, test script will execute. So when we have to get the uh, when we have to get the response, so once you send this request, we will get the response. That means what after successful request after completion of successful request, then we have to capture the response. So this is the body we are sending, then we will get the response and the ID will be automatically generated, which is part of your response. So from that response, we have to capture the ID. So in the test script, I'm going to write something here. So we have a library, right? JSON dot, JSON dot, okay. We have something called parse, JSON dot parse of, and uh, here we need to specify the response body. So response, this is the keyword, response body. So when you specify this command, json.parse response body, so whatever response we are getting from this request, the entire response body will be returned. And that I'm going to store in a variable. I'll name it as json data, json data. Now I'll define this variable as a var keyword. Because in JavaScript, we can use different keywords to declare the variables. It can be var, it can be let, or it can be constant, whatever. Mm -hmm. So I'm defining this variable with the var keyword. So what this statement will do after getting the response, this will parse the entire response and store that entire response in the JSON data. Now, from this data, we are extracting the ID. We are going to extract the ID that we are going to store in a variable. Right? So how we can extract that ID and store that in a variable. So to extract the ID from this, we have to use something called JSON path. So in the JSON data, we have an ID field. So JSON data dot ID we can directly use. 
okay because we got the response uh, again in the same format okay so we got the response uh, in the same format we just go to the body section this is the same format we will get so suppose id will automatically generate so if you generated id how we can access the id directly we can specify this json data dot id so this particular statement will return entire json data from this we have to extract the id so how to extract the id now json data dot id so this will give us the id but where we have to store this id we will create some environment variable and then we will store this variable uh, we will store this id in that variable so how to create environment variable on the fly i'm going to create so here through the script i just want to create an environment variable simply we can say set method right so pm dot environment environment dot set so this will create an environment variable automatically and the variable name is called id and then a comma key key and a value pair so the first statement will get the entire response into this variable and now from that variable we are extracting the id and the id value we are going to save inside the id variable and this particular command will create environment variable on the runtime we are not creating the environment variable manually this particular script will automatically create environment variable and create id as also which contains this value so that means what we are doing here we are sending the post request with this body and once you get a response from that response we are extracting the id and uh, creating the environment variable called id and the same value we are storing into the id variable okay so this is the first step we need to do now save it okay so once you send this create new request we will get an id in the environment variable now in the next request we have to use that variable okay so in the next request what we are doing we are just displaying the student data when you send this request we got the student data but here currently it is giving first to student data but what is the student data we want to display whatever the new student which is created in the previous request the same student data we want to see it for that we required id so now instead of hard coding this value here we will just refer the environment variable okay so we have to just refer the environment variable so we already created environment variable in the tested app in the previous request right so the same thing we have to specify let's say id so now i'm getting this id from the environment variable that variable is created by my previous request which is post request okay done now save this now so the next thing is what delete request so in the delete request also we will get this variable from the environment so remove this and then get the value from the environment which is id now save the request now the chaining is done so in the first request we are sending the body and we are creating the new student record from that we are extracting the id and then i'm creating an environment variable i'm storing that id value in the second request i'm referring the environment variable here which is id and getting the data here even the third request also i'm retrieving the value from the same environment variable okay so this is how we can do it now let me just execute the request and we have to save everything and then we will run the entire collection so now i'm going to run my collection click on it and then run collection and select all the collections post get and delete and then run student api chaining so now everything is executed but somehow something is got failed now let us see why it is got failed so student single student okay so create a new student it is got executed and this is also passed and uh, something it has got failed test array properties something is got failed here and here also it is failed test array properties but the request is successfully sent but somehow uh, it is not getting the value okay so we'll see whether it's created environment variable or not with id so go here so yeah so previously the id is already available in the environment variable which is four okay so it is captured now actually so once you created the post request which is captured the four which is already saved here and this id we are using in the 
uh, get request and here and also in the delete request and let's go to the console and see where it will then wrong okay i think these are the uh, three requests last three requests you can just go to the post okay and when you're posting it and you can see the response body in the post request what is the response body we have sent yeah this is the response body we got so four is created and this is successful executed now go to the get request and what is the response we got in the get request response body yeah we got the correctly and uh, what else delete request in the delete request also successfully done so i don't see any issues here okay let's run one more time I think some validations, let's check some validations are kept or not in the test here. We don't have any validations. Okay, I think some validations got failed guys. So request is successful, but some validations got failed. So you can just look at here, get single student. I have put some validations here. See, I think these validations have got failed. Okay, so 200 is a status code. Okay, so for now, let me just remove all other validations point. I think some validation is not expecting, so it is getting failed. So 200, let's keep the uh, status code for now. And for daily student also, on the daily students, we don't have any validations. Okay, and only idea I'm taking. Okay, so post request, get request, and then a delete request. So here environment variable, which is already created. So I'm just removing this. Or even though if you have this, it will override this value. So next time when executing, it will automatically uh, override this value. So you can just keep it, no problem. Okay, so let's try to run one more time. So execute. And four records we are allocated. Now this time we will create fifth record. Close it and then run the collection. And when you run the collection, just give some delay time here because it will go very faster. Just say two seconds delay time and then execute. Okay, so now you can see creates new student is executed. Even get a student is also executed. We have given the status code 200, which is passed. And now the daily student is also successfully executed. So now you can just look at the environment variable. Now ID value has become four. ID value has become four. Now we'll see which ID which is created, four or five, where we can see, go to the console window and uh, see the post request, post request, and here response body. So which is created still four, because earlier, which is already deleted, fourth record is got deleted, created and immediately deleted. So the new record is four, not five. But if the fourth record is already available in the, file then it will create a new record which is fifth record so perfectly executed no problem so this is a concept of uh, chaining so we can take the value or response from the previous request and use that as a request to the next uh, http request so this is basically called as a chaining so in the from the first request we are extracted id and the same id we are using in other two requests to display the data to delete the data so this is a simple understanding of what is chaining now let me show you one more example of chaining and uh, this is our local ipa now i'm going to take uh, one more uh, api from the internet let me show you what is that api so okay so let's go to the google and i'm just going to introduce one real-time api now which is uh, go rest okay just search for go rest and uh, this is providing sample apis for us and we need some authentication also to access this api so i'll show you how to create an authentication how to get a token for that to access this api and to explore this first go to this website and uh, graphql and rest api for testing and prototyping so we are going to take some rest api from here so they have given some resources here, users, posts, comments, and to-dos. And for them, they are also giving some endpoints here. So these endpoints are given for users. 
So this is a post endpoint of post request. This is endpoint of get request. And this is for put or patch request. And this is for delete request. So by using these endpoints, we can create a new user. We can get the user, we can update the user, and we can delete the user. So these are the operations which we can do by sending this request. And these are just only endpoints. These are just only endpoints. So we have to use these endpoints along with the uh, URL. So suppose if we want to create a new user, so what is the complete URL which we have to send? First, we need to capture this, right? So this is a URL and a slash. Then we have to use this one. So then copy this endpoint and then place it over here this way. So now this is a complete URL. So which will give the user. So when I just go and hit this and we will get some users here. So this is how we can access the API. Okay. But the user information we can access, but there are something uh, we need some kind of authentication. Okay. So we need some kind of a token. Uh, especially when you want to do some request. Okay, I'll, I'll show you how to uh, create a token number to access these APIs. Before that, uh, then we will try to use it. So users, it will give you all the user information, which will give you the first user information. And this will create a new user. This will delete the existing user. Okay, so here we are not going to create any JSON file. And these endpoints they have provided as part of this document, right? So we are just going to use these endpoints along with the URL so that we will able to get the response from those APIs. Okay, so we won't create any JSON file for this API. So this is a, a remote API. We are able to access through internet. This is not our local API. We are not going to run any JSON command locally. Remember, student API is a different. That is our local API, which we have run. We have a control on that. But this API is not, we don't have any control on this. These are the APIs are exposed in the internet just for testing purpose. Okay, so to access this API, what we need to do, we need to create a token number. We need to create some kind of a token and uh, we can access these APIs. We can uh, explore this API, we can test these APIs. Okay, so you don't need to have any JSON file. You don't need to run any JSON command to access this API. Just understand the difference between local API and the remote APIs. And don't confuse. Okay. Is there any confusion on this, guys? Between local API, difference between local APIs and the remote API. So remote APIs, we don't need to do any setup, nothing. We just send this URL directly in the postman. But if you want to work with the local APIs, we have to run the JSON server. And we need to have a JSON file. And here we don't need any JSON file. Clear everyone. So let me try to use this now. So these are the different uh, endpoints which are given for this uh, Go REST API. And uh, there are different things are there, but we need to uh, work with the users. Okay. So this is first URL. This will display the, all the users information. And second one displays single user information. Okay. And this will display the uh, Again, this will create a new user and this will delete the new user. Okay, so now we are going to use this particular API. Okay, so this is a go rest.co.in. This is the URL and this is the endpoint. So similarly, they have provided uh, different endpoints for this API. So create a user, display users, create a user, display one user and create a one user and then delete a user. So these are the samples they have given. So to access these APIs, okay, first uh, we have some prerequisite. So what I'm saying here is uh, get your token. Okay, so here what they are doing, request methods, put, post, patch, delete needs access token. Okay, which needs to be passed with the authorization header as a barrier token. What it is saying is if you just want to access these APIs, we need a token. We have to generate one token that we have to pass as part of authorization. So most of the times, whatever APIs you are accessing through internet, those APIs are having some kind of authorization. So authorization, again, there are different types of authorizations are there. In the next two sessions, we will discuss them. For now, this particular API, uh, 
uh, will take one type of authorization called bearer token. Okay, bearer token is one of the type of authorization. So we need to create the token, then only we will able to send the request. Then only we will able to use this particular API, right? But how we can get that access token? So to get this access token, okay, so what we need to do is we need to first sign up the website. So here there is a login option is there, okay? And you need to sign up to this particular website first. You need to do sign up process. So if I just click on this link, get access token and open this in the new tab. Okay, now here authentication is required, it is saying. So here, if you have a GitHub account, you can directly click on this or you can just do your Google account or Microsoft account, three authentications are supported. And once you click on this button automatically, it will create an account for you and it will return the token, uh, token number for you. Okay, it will automatically give the token number. As soon as you click on this GitHub, or as soon as you click on the Google, you have to provide your Gmail ID and password or your GitHub username and password. And then automatically it will give the access token for you. It will give the access token for you. And uh, I already created this. I got that access token also. So I'll try to use that access token as part of this request. So let me just log in as a GitHub account. Let me just click, click on GitHub here. This is ad which is displayed. Okay, now you can see as soon as I click on the GitHub, so which is generated one token here. And this token is already generated earlier. Okay, and uh, if you want to generate another token, just click on the new access token. This will automatically generate another token. And this particular token uh, expires, never expire, but uh, only 90 uh, limit, there is some limit is there. Okay, there is some limit is there. So per day, we can send these many number of requests. Okay, per day, we can send these many number of requests. This is a limit, but this will never expire. Okay, so this will be there. Or even if you expire, no problem, you can create another token. You can delete this, you can take another token. Okay, so this is a token I'm just going to use to access my APIs. This is the first prerequisite. Later, I will share the document, okay? So first, uh, observe this. How we need to access this? Go REST API. Okay, so this is the uh, URL, but not endpoint, okay? Endpoint is this one. There are so many endpoints they have given. If you just go to their website, these are the endpoints which we are going to try. And let me just copy them and then keep it here. Okay, so post is a request. This is the endpoint and this is the description. I'll keep it here. This is the endpoint and uh, this is the endpoint. Okay, so along with this URL, we have to send this endpoint. Then we will get the results. So this is the token. So you have to create your own token. So don't use my token. This will automatically again block. So use your own token, create your own token to access this API. So this is these are the prerequisites. And how we will know all these things? From the documentation, I have captured this. So they have given enough information. They have provided all the endpoints. And also they have intimated us to create a token, how to create a token and access a token. And now I'm going to use it. So again, if you just go down this page, they have clearly given more information. So they are given some different status codes and also uh, they have given so many things and especially uh, authentication information. And they are given so much of document and we will try to understand about this curl and everything later. For now, it is not required. So now let me just uh, try to send a request. And one more thing we need, especially for the post request, right? When I do post request, we have to know how to pass response body and so on, right? So that information, uh, we will be able to get it uh, here. So for example, how we can post the, how we can pass the request, how we can specify the response body. Because other requests, we don't need. Like a get request, we don't need res, uh, request body. And for patch request, again, we need request body because we want to update the data. And delayed user, we don't need. So especially for post request, put request, we need request body in which format of data we have to send. So that is also available here can just look at here, create user. And here they have given the format here. 
Okay, so they have given some format here. So name, name is one field, gender and email address and status. There are four fields, name field, gender, email and the status. So they are the four fields they are giving and which we need to use as part of our response. So let me just keep it here. So response body. Sorry, yeah, request body, not a response. We have to send the request body. Okay, so let's look at this. So here we have to provide some name. Okay, and here we have to provide some name like this. And the next field is a gender. And the next field is email. So here we need to provide email address like this. And the next field is what a status. Okay, so this is how we need to send the request body. So this is our request body. When you send your uh, post request or put request, we have to send this particular body. Okay, so this is a format they have already given in their official documentation. So all prerequisites are satisfied. So we have URL, we have a different endpoints, we have a token, then what request body we have to send also, we will know that. So now let us uh, try to uh, test these APIs and uh, we are going to implement the chaining concept here. Okay. So how we are going to implement chaining concept here is we have a post request first. And from the post request, we will get the ID. And by using that ID, we are going to display the data by sending get request. And by using the same ID, we are going to update the record. By using that ID, we are going to delete the record. Okay, whatever ID we are generating from the first request, same ID I am referring in the another request. Okay, so let me just share a small picture. So how we are going to achieve the shining process. Yeah, so now let us look at this. So now what we are going to do is first step, we are, we are going to create a new user. And to create a new user, we have to pass the data, name, gender, email, and status. Okay, so name, gender, email, and status. So these are the fields which we have to pass as part of request body. And that will create a user. And from the response, we are getting the ID. We have to extract the ID from the response. And by using this ID, we are going to send three different type of request. And first we will send get a user request. And again, get a user request will give some response to us. The user details will be displayed. And again, we will compare these user details, right? Whatever the user details we provided at the time of creating the user, those details, and after getting the user, the details which we are getting here should be same. Okay, these two details we have to compare. And apart from this, this ID we have to use to update the user, the same ID we have to use to delete the user. So this is a something called API chaining, okay? So now the same thing we are going to implement. So multiple concepts, we are going to use it here. We are going to create variables and we are going to refer those variables as part of your request URL and also as part of your request body also. Okay, this time we are going to use the variables as part of request body also. So multiple things are there here, just listen carefully. So this is the thing we are going to implement now step by step. So first thing is, let us go to Postman and we will create a request first. Okay, so now go to Postman tool. And same thing we are going to implement step by step, right? So this is my postman. Now let me just create a new collection for that. So I click on plus button and this is my new collection. I'm giving some name. Okay, uh, I'll just give some name called GoRest API Chaining. Okay, GoRest API Chaining. So this is the name of the collection I'm, I'm, I'm giving. Right, so then which is created a new collection. So in this, uh, let us try to create, let us try to create a, a different request. So first let us create a HTTP request, add request. And here, this is for create user. I'm saying create, create user. Okay, this is a request I'm going to create create a user and what is the request post request and what is the url which we have to send we have to send this url along with that 
along with that, we should also send endpoint. So which endpoint we have to send? This is the endpoint which we have to send. Okay, this is the endpoint which we have to send to create a user. So here, this is the endpoint. This is the endpoint. And what is the data we have to give? So go to body section, raw, and take the JSON format. And here we have to pass the data. So this is the format which we have to pass the data. So this is my name and then gender, some email address and the status. And one important thing here is whenever you are creating the new user, the email ID should be different from one user to another user. So suppose if first time when you run this request, maybe successful. Second time when you run the same request with the same email ID, that will fail. So every time we have to pass a new email ID. And again, this is difficult thing, right? Every time if you want to change the new email ID, very difficult thing. So what we can do is we can generate this email ID automatically. So random email ID we can generate at the runtime and that we can pass it. Okay. So I'll show you how we can automatically generate email. Even name also we can automatically generate. So anything you can automatically generate instead of hard coding this data. Because if you want to run the same request multiple times, then what happens? Same kind of data we cannot create. So every time we have to change the data. So manually, if you want to change the data, again, it is a tedious task. So every time when you're sending the request, we can automatically generate this data and we can pass it along with the request. Okay, that we will see how we can. So first I'm uh, put here post request URL and also I specified the body and then click on the save. I'm not sending the request. I'm just first creating all the requests and finally we will send at once. Okay, so now I'm saving the request. Now let us create another one. And once you send a post request, then what we need to do, we need to uh, send a get user request. So this is the URL which we have to send as an endpoint. Now take this URL and create another request in the same collection. Add request. And this is the get request. And this is for what? Get user details. Get user details. Now this is your URL. And what is an endpoint? This is an endpoint. This is an endpoint. And for this, do we need to pass any parameters? Again, this ID, we will take it from the previous request that I will do later. First of all, let us create all the request type and then we will think about collection variables and other things. So now I'm sending the request, I'm saving it. I'm not sending, just I'm saving everything I'm making ready, okay? So get request also I have saved. So now what is the next request? Put or patch request. Again, take the same URL and create another request. And I'm taking the post request and this is the URL slash and what is an endpoint for update? This is the endpoint. This is the endpoint. Currently, the ID is hard coded, so later we will change it. So this is a post URL. And when you're trying to update any record, we have to also pass the body also, right? When you're trying to update the record. So when you're trying to update the record, so suppose when you're sending a post request, what is the details we are passing? Name, gender, email, and status we are passing. So let us try to update the name and the email address. These two fields I'm just going to update. So let's go back to the. In just a second. I think this is a post request. One second. Okay. So here we need to select the put request, not post request. Yeah. Just a moment. So we created this is the post request. One second. Okay, so this is a post request I'm saving. So now we need to create a post request. Let's create another request, add request. And this is going to be put request. And the name of the request is what? Update user, right? So in the put request, we have to pass this URL. Along with that, we should also specify the endpoint. So to update the user, this is the endpoint. Okay, this is the endpoint, right? 
So now we need to also pass the body, right? So what is the data we want to update? Now again, go to raw, and then JSON section. And here we need to specify what is the data we wanted to uh, update. So simply copy the same data from the post request. The same data we are going to update. But here we are trying to update only name, email, and status. Name, email, and status. And just put only these three. So previously it was active. Now this I'm going to update as active. Previously it was inactive. Now I'm making as active. I'll also change this email later. Okay. But anyway, we are going to pass this data dynamically, not hard coded. So later I will change it. So first of all, let's make uh, base state ready. Okay. So first create all the requests, make it ready. And then we will do whatever changes are required. So now let me save this. Yeah. So now how many requests we created? A create user, get user, update user. And uh, this is something new. So let me just delete this. Okay. So three requests we created, create user, get user, update user. Then we have to create a delete user request. So let's create one more request, add request. And this is delete request. And when you delete the request, we have to pass this one more endpoint. Go back, specify this. And now endpoint is what? This is the endpoint. Slash this one. So double slash should not be there. Okay, one single slash. Okay, so we are doing partial update. So you can use patch request or put request, whatever you want. Yeah, we follow as per the documentation, okay? So this is your delete request. Now I'm also saving this information. Yeah, so now we have four different type of requests we created. Create user, get user, update user, and this is a, a delete user. Let me just rename this name. This is a delete user. Okay, so delete user. So now I have a four different type of request. Create user, get user, update user, and then delete user. So now what we need to do is to access these APIs, we have to provide something called token. Okay, we have to provide something called token. So to access this particular APIs. Okay, so we already generated the token, right? So where exactly we have to specify the token? So where exactly we have to specify the token. So they have given some, some information here. So especially uh, you can just look at here authorization. Authorization is one of the parameter which we have to pass along with every request. Authorization is what? Bearer and this authentication token which we have to specify. Bearer, authentication token which we have to specify. Okay. So before sending the token, it will give an error. So especially when you... Uh, delete a user or when you create a user which will not work let me try to send this i'm not provided any authentication now let me send this let's say abc one two three four five six some email id i'm giving so let's try to execute this okay so now you can see this message is what authentication got failed so this is the message you will get authentication failed so we need to pass the token so we need to pass the token for authentication and then we will be able to execute this request otherwise you will get this message authentication got failed so now where exactly we specify the token number so where exactly we have to specify the token so we already captured the token and this is our token so this token we have to pass as part of authorization so now what we can do copy this token and open the request you can just go to create user you can see something called authorization here. Can you see here authorization? Select this option. And here there is an option called inherit authentication. Right? So here you can just take this bearer token authentication and you can just paste it over here. I already pasted here. Okay. You can just paste it over here directly. And you have to do the same thing for other requests also. You can just go to other request and authorization and take this barrel token and here you have to copy. But again, this is the repetitive task, right? If you have a 10 request, again, in every request, we have to do this change. And suppose tomorrow, if you want to change the token number, then we need to again update each and every request. So to avoid this, what we can do is we can create collection level variable. Okay, so let me create a variable now. So go to collection, select the collection. And here, uh, there is authorization tab is there. So we will 
uh, we will add authorization at the collection level. So that will automatically applicable for all the requests. So we are not going to create any variable here. Variable is not required, but authentication we will define at the collection level. So if you have this other authorization at the request level, and that authorization work only for that particular request. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to add that authorization token at the collection level. So how to add that? So you can just go and select the collection. So you can just go and select the collection here. And you can see authorization. So along with the pre-request test script, you can see authorization. Don't go with the variable section. Authorization here, select the bearer token authorization and just copy the token here. Okay, that's it. So once you specify here, then you have to save it. You can just uh, provide this authorization token, authorization token. That's it. So once you provide it, your job is done. So once you provide it here, this token is applicable for all the requests, but you have to save it before that. Okay, you can see the save button here, save collection. You have to save it. Otherwise that will not be available. Click on the save. So now at the collection level, I have specified my token. So now go to the request and go to the authorization. So here you can see inherit authorization. Inherit authorization from parent means what? It will automatically get that authorization token from the collection. So make sure this option should be selected for every request. So here also inherit authentication and here also authorization and here inherit authentication and for delete user go to authorization and inherit authentication. So in every request by default, it will be there. You don't need to worry about this. So this token we have passed at the collection level because the same token which we required for every request. But if you specify the token at the request level here, that token will be used only for this request. Other requests cannot use it. So that is the reason we put that token authorization at the collection level. Okay, collection level. So, so far, are you guys clear? Please confirm in the chat window. So how we can capture the token, how we can define the token, how we can define the token for the API level. Okay, so now we have done something here. So we have uh, applied this token for authorization. So now uh, all requests are there. So now we can just try to execute them one by one and then we will see about uh, chaining process, okay? So let's go and create create user. So I have specified the body also. Let me just one, two, three, four, five, something I'm specifying. So let us try to execute a post request. Click on send button. Okay, so now we can see authorization is successful and we got some record here. What is an ID which is created? 4113. So this is the ID which is created. 201 created is a status code. Now I'm using this ID for other requests. Go to get user details and here I'm passing the ID and now send it. So now we are able to see the data. 4113 data is this one. So now I'll update this data. So go to update user and then specify the same ID and let us try to update the user. So what is the user details which we have given earlier? Name, email ID, gender and status. I'm trying to change some details here. Uh, name. Okay, so I can say I'll change the name instead of Scott I'm making as a John and here I'll say XYZ some email ID I'm changing and instead of previously it was inactive status is inactive and then this time I'm changing as an active so these are the details I'm changing for the same ID now execute yeah so now it got changed so data is got updated now I want to delete this record now go to the delete request and specify the ID and then send Okay, so now it is got deleted. So no content is nothing but record is got deleted. So now all API requests are successfully working. So far, we have done very basic. Okay, so it's very basic we have done. We have not applied any variables concept. We have not applied any chaining concept. We have just created a new HTTP request. I have, we have sent these requests individually. One after another, we have sent them manually. Okay, so so far, are you guys clear? So how to get APIs and how to 
create a token, how to add the token, how to create different type of requests and how to execute. So these are very basic, nothing new in this. So in the last classes also, we have seen the same thing. We have repeated the same thing for student API, request and response API, same thing we have done earlier also, nothing new here so far, okay? But now whatever we are going to implement, something will be new here. So let us try to implement the chaining concept here. We have just created post request, get request, put request, and delete request. Now we need to do the chaining process. So for that, what you will do is let's go to the picture again. So for create user, we have to send some data, name, gender, email, and status. So first time when executing the post request with this particular data, which is executed, but if I send the same email ID again, which will definitely fail. The same email ID is not accepted for multiple users, right? So now what we need to do is we need to change that email ID. Randomly, we have to pass this email ID. And not only email ID, I will also pass this name randomly. I want to generate this name and email randomly. Okay, that's my requirement. So to generate them randomly, what we can do is before sending this post request, before sending this post request, I will write some script which will automatically generate name and email. But where exactly I have to write the script? Can anyone guess? So I want to write some script which will automatically generate a name and a email address. And that script I will execute before sending the request. So where exactly we have to put that script under pre-request script. Right. So before this sending this request, I want to generate this name and email ID, then I will pass it. So if you want to generate this name and email ID, I will write my own script that should be part of pre request script. Now go here in this. I'm going to add some script here, JavaScript. I'm going to add. So for example, here I'm going to generate from random string. Okay. I'm going to generate some random string. How to generate random string in JavaScript? I will tell you, I will tell you simple st uh, statement here. Just use it as it is. We have a math library in JavaScript. Inside this, we have a method called random. Inside this, we have to use one method called string 36 dot substring method. We have to use substring of let's put two something, or you can put two, three, five, whatever you want. Depends on that. The string will be generated. So this particular statement will return a random string for us and that I'm going to store in a variable. Okay, random is a, my variable. This is my variable. And so I can define this variable as a var keyword. So this particular statement will create a random string and store that random string in this particular variable. Now, by using this random string, I will create my own user email and I will create my own password, uh, own username, email and username. So name and email. Okay. So let me just uh, create user email equal to, and this is also variable I'm creating user email equal to, I already captured this random, right? So I'll take this random string. Before that, I'm adding some prefix also because the name or email should be in proper format. So I'm just adding something called gym or whatever you want. So concatenate with the random plus it should be properly in the Gmail format or any email format. So I'll put something called at the rate gmail.com. So what happens with this statement? We already generated some random string here. So first I'm using gym as a prefix in the email ID followed by the random string followed by the at the rate gmail.com. So this will exactly generate a valid email format. Okay, this will exactly generate random email ID. Every time it will generate a new email ID. But in every email ID, this one and this one is a common and the random value will be keeps changing. So this will generate random email ID that I'm going to store in this variable. Similarly, I will also generate the name of the user. So how we can generate the name? I'll create one more variable where username equal to, again, I'm taking the same variable. I say gym and uh, plus random. Prefix, I'm using gym and uh, use random. So random is nothing but it will generate the random string every time. So I got a random email ID here and random username. So these two I'm going to use as part of our request body here 
and here i want to refer the data two places i want to refer the data but how we can refer the data we just created a variables we just created the data not even variables so we have to add this data to the environment variables so that we can refer them right so that we can refer them so what we have done here we are just creating the random data especially email and name and if you add the data to the environment variables those variables we can refer as part of our request so if i just go to the postman here we just created a variables now i want to make them as a environment variables so how to make them as environment variables so that these variables are available throughout the collection so i say pm dot environment dot set dot set now i'm creating environment variable called email underscore env and what is the value of this environment variable this user email this is the value of the environment variable so this will create email address environment variable user email similarly i will create one more environment variable for name user name here we have to pass user name and here this is uh, name underscore environment variable so now we created two environment variables so we created random string based on that we created random email address random name and we set those two as an environment variable so once you created your environment variables can we refer these variables inside the body inside the body not as part of the request in the previous session we have seen how to use environment variables as part of the, how to use environment variables as part of your request url but now we are going to use that variables inside the body, inside the body. So now whatever environment variables we created, the same environment variables we are going to refer here. So let me remove the hard-coded value. How we can refer? Very simple. Two curly braces. And here we just keep the variable name. What is the variable name of name? You, uh, name underscore environment. This is a way we have to use. Name underscore environment and keep everything in the double quotations here we have to keep double quotations because it is a body but if you want to refer anything as part of your request double quotations are not required but inside the body double quotations are required put everything in the double quotation same thing for email address also so let us get the variable of email address email underscore env go to the body section and i will replace this and keep that variable in double curly braces. Now we can just look at this. We are able to pass the parameters as part of your request body and save it. Right? So now when you send this request, what will happen? First pre-request script will execute and which will generate user email and password. Sorry, general email address and username. And the same data with the same data, environment variables will be created. The same environment variables we are using as part of your request. Okay. So let us try to execute this and see whether it is able to create or not. When executing this, send. Yes. Now you can just look at this. This is created the name like this. And this is the email address. Now every time when you, rent, uh, when you send this request, the new name and the new email ID will be automatically created. Okay, so new name and a new email ID is automatically created. So here we don't need any date and timestamp, not at all required. Okay, if you need that, you have to again create some JavaScript function. So you need to use some JavaScript date and time functions. But here we don't need all those things. We can just generate some random data. Okay, so guys, I understood this part. So how we have passed name and email address dynamically. How, why we have passing dynamically because same data is not allowed for every user. Okay, so tomorrow if you run the same request multiple times, it will give an error. So because we are sending the same data. But this time what happens? Every time when you're sending the post request, the new name and new email address will be given. Okay, so let me run one more time. Again, click on the send. So again, it is created another email ID and another name. So every time it will generate new name and a new email ID. So that's where we can make it as a dynamic. Okay, perfect. So create user request is successfully done.
So as per our screenshot, we have successfully created user request by passing this data dynamically. Okay, this part is completed. Now, what is the next part we can do now? Next part. This request will return some ID for us, right? If I just see the response body, it is generated this ID. And we need this ID for other request, right? We need this ID for other request. For getting user, update user, delete user, to perform these requests, we need this ID. So now what we need to do, we need to extract this ID from the response. After getting the response only, we will be able to extract. So where I have to write the script now to capture that ID, where I have to write the script? Under test tab, test tab, go to the test tab. And here we need to capture that ID. In the previous example, we have seen same thing we will repeat here. JSON library dot, we have a method called parse. Inside this, we have to pass one keyword called response body. Okay, response body. So this will return the entire response body into a variable. I'm creating one variable called where JSON data is my variable. Now from this JSON data, we have to extract this ID. So to extract that ID, what we can do is we can take that variable JSON.ID. That will give the ID. And that ID, I will create as an environment variable again, because that I want to use in another request. So let's make this ID as an environment variable. For that, what you can do again, pm.environment.set. We are setting as an environment variable. So JSON, what is the key here? I can say user ID underscore environment, comma, JSON data dot ID. Done. So we extracted the body, the entire body we have extracted into this variable. And from that body, I'm extracting the ID and uh, create environment variable with this ID. So once it is done, now what happens when you send your create user request, first a prerequisite script will execute, which will generate name and email address randomly. Then request will be sent. Then we'll get the response. From this response, the test data will execute and uh, get the ID and then create an environment variable. So we have successfully completed the first part. So this part we completed. We have successfully sent a create user request with the dynamic data and we have extracted ID as an environment variable, right? So now what is the next step? We have to use this ID in other request to get user, to update user, to delete user, right? So let's uh, do that. So now ID is an environment variable, so we can use it in everywhere. So now go to the next request, get user details, and now replace this ID with the environment variable. So how to replace this? Double curly braces. And here we have to specify the variable name. What's the variable name here? ID, right? So I can say user underscore, sorry, user ID underscore environment variable. So this is the environment variable we created in the create user. So this is the environment variable name I'm referring here. So now this will get the details of this. Now save the request. Now go to the next request, update user. So here also we have to replace this ID. I say user ID underscore environment and then save the request. Now same thing repeat for Dell also, Dell request here. I say user ID underscore environment variables and then save it done so here we created the user by passing dynamic data and extract the id from the response and this id we have passed to get user update user and delete user and but especially in update user we should also pass the body what what, uh, what are the details we want to update that also we need to pass right let's go and update the update request put request, we need to update. So go to put request and here this body, right? So this is a, we want to update, but again, uh, which data we want to update again, name and email address status. Anyway, we put active, this will uh, update, but the name and email address we have to update. So name and email address, I want to update. So what we will do again, we will repeat the same thing. So whatever the 
code we have written for generating name and email address as part of your create user. The same thing again, we will able to update. Okay, so let us try to do this. Okay, so I think something we forgot. In the get request, we forgot something. Let's go to create user. So in the create user, we are dynamically generating the body and uh, we are executing the pre-request script. In the pre-request script, we are generating user ID and email ID. That is fine. Okay. And in the test tab, uh, in the test tab, uh, we capture the entire response and we are get, we are getting the ID and then we are setting the uh, environment variable. Okay. Is there anything missing guys here under test tab? No, right? Yeah, so perfectly fine. So now go to the get user details. So here we need to do something else. Get user details. So in the get user details, once you get a response from this, we have to compare these values, right? So once you use this ID and the get user, we will get some response. So whatever the name, uh, email address we passed when you're sending post request and after getting the request also, we should get the same data. So these two details we have to compare. These two details we have to compare. So how we can compare that? So in the get request, we need to add some tests. We need to add some test. Okay. So to compare that, we need to do something here. So what do we need to do? As soon as you are sending the get user, you are getting these details, right? And the, these details, you have to again create environment variables. Okay, we need to compare with the environment variables because here, name and email address. Name and email address, we created environment variables anyway. After creating the user, we have extracted and created the environment variables, right? If I just go back and see the create user. In the create user, we uh, under pre-request script, we created user email and password. Sorry, user email and user name we created as part of pre-request script. And as part of the test script, we capture the ID and create that as an environment variable. Now, when you go to the get user details here, we pass the user ID here. That is successfully fine but in the testers tab so we need to add something right because whatever the response we will get here whatever response we will get here that response should be exactly equal to the data which we pass in the post request okay so that we need to verify so now we need to verify the response data we need to verify the response data so let's see how to verify the response data for that we need to write a test in the last classes, we have seen right how to verify the response data. Same thing, we have to do it. So let me just validating the JSON fields in the response. Validating JSON fields in the response. Okay, in the response. So how to validate? We need to use a PM library, pm.test. And I'm giving I'm writing the arrow function. So pm.test. And what I'm going to test here, I'm going to test the values of values of JSON fields, values of JSON fields I want to test. And now bracket and I'm writing the arrow function. I'm writing the arrow function here. And here curly brace. Okay, so here we need to write. <clears throat> So in this, first of all, we need to capture the entire response, right? So pm dot response, pm dot response dot JSON. So this will actually extract the entire JSON response and storing that in a variable. I say where of JSON data. This is my first step. So what exactly I'm doing? Once you send your get request, we will get some response. So I'm getting the data from that response. So for that, I'm writing this uh, method. So pm.response.json, we got the JSON data. And now we need to check name, email, and ID is exactly the same or not, right? So whatever the ID we are using here and response and name, email address should be same. So that we need to compare here. So how we can compare that? 
pm.expect pm.expect and from this json data we have to extract the id so json data dot id json data dot id two dot equal equal and uh, it should be equal to what so this data should be equal to uh, we need to compare this id right in the create user in the create user in the test tab we already set environment variable id environment variable right so in the get request in the get request we need to compare this id with the environment variable id which is created in the, my previous request got my point so when you're sending your create request we will get the id right and this id using this id we have to extract the data from uh, for the user so once you extracted this data id name and email so these three fields we have to compare with our previous fields name email and status right so for that what you need to do and whatever the id we have extracted uh, in the post request user whatever id we have extracted and create as an environment variable now we need to compare this data we have to compare this id with that environment variable so how we can compare that here we need to extract the environment variable how to extract actually there are two statements guys let me do like this first let us try to extract the value from the environment variable okay i say pm dot environment dot get is a method in the last class we discussed right if you want to get the environment variable data i can say pm dot environment dot get and here we have to specify that what is that user id slash environment so this will give you environment uh, variable value and with that value we need to compare this one right so now keep this entire statement here oh okay one single statement so what exactly we are doing here we are getting the value from the environment variable and compare that value with our response data and whatever id we captured in the response in the get request we are comparing with that so it should be same right so at the time of creating user whatever id we are using and the get user details also we should get the same id so that we are comparing in this particular statement okay same thing we have to repeat for user email and also environment variables other two validation points also we need to keep so now i'll put one other validation point json data this time i'll verify the email so email to equal to pm dot environment dot get yeah in the post request uh in the pre-request script we already created two environment variables for email and name right these two we created already so now we need to compare the data with these two environment variables go back to the get user request so pm dot environment dot get here user email Envir environment variable we already created in the post user so in the post user we already created email address and name as an environment variables now we are using those environment variables in the get user because we want to compare here okay because as soon as you pass this id okay this id we are using as part of get user request and again we will get the response right so this particular response and uh, the data which we are using at the time of creating user should be same so these two things i am comparing so these two things i am comparing here okay so let me just do this suppose so these are the variables which are created as environment variable or not yes so we are created this name as environment variable email is also environment variable now id is also part of environment variable and these environment variables we created as part of pre-request script and this we created an environment variable as part of test script for create user now name email okay and here id both three are part of environment variables now after getting the user after displaying the user details here i am checking this id name and emails are exactly equal to this environment variables or not that's what i am checking here so after getting the response from this id after getting the response i get the id name and email address right so whatever name email address we are passing here here also we should get the same id and name email so we need to compare this how we are comparing this 
we are extracting this data and we are comparing that data with the environment variables. So that is a concept we are applying here. So go to the postman again. So in the first request, in the post request, in the post request, in the pre-request script, we created these two environment variables. Why we create in the pre-request? Because we want to use it as part of your body here. That's the reason we created. So ID environment variable we created as part of the test request because the ID will be generated after sending request. After request is successful, then ID will be generated. So that's the reason ID environment variable we created as part of the test. Now tell me how many environment variables are there now totally. After successfully sending this post request, how many environment variables are there? Please respond. Priyanka, please respond. How many variables are there now? So when you're sending the post request, how many total number of environment variables are there? So here in the pre-request script, we created two environment variables. That is email and a name. And in the test script, we created one more environment variable that is called user, email, uh, user ID. So totally three variables are there. One is user name, other one is user email, the other one is user ID. These are the three environment variables which are already available uh, when you're sending the post request. Okay, now in the get request also, I'm using the same environment variables for comparison purpose. I'm using the same environment variables, whatever environment variables we created in the create user, the same environment variables data should be there in the get user details also. That's the point here. Okay, so for that, what we need to do, go to the test tab after getting the get user details. What I'm doing here, I'm capturing the data from the response and compare that ID value with the environment variable. So this is code is for getting the environment variable value. And this is for getting the value from the response of get request. Same thing here also. Here, this statement will get the value from the environment variable. And this will get the value from the response. So email from the response, email from environment variable should be same. That's what I'm saying. So here it should be user email user email underscore environment variable. So this is the concept guys. Similarly, ID email we verified. Similarly, the name also we can verify, right? So let me just copy the same statement here. pm.expert, json.data, dot name we have to extract here. Take the name and two dot equal pm.environment dot. So what is the environment variable of name we have given? User name, right? User name which we have given. And uh, Please cross check the variable name once again so that you will understand. Okay, in the create user, what are the names we have given? User ID underscore environment. If you are having any doubt, you can just write it down here. User ID underscore environment variable. And here, what we have written under test email underscore environment variable. This is one more variable and name underscore env. So, this is another variable. So, these are the three variables, environment variables we created. Now, at the time of get request also, it should be same. So for ID, we have to use this one, user underscore ID environment variable. This is correct. And for email address, we created email underscore environment variable, email underscore environment variable. This is for email. And for the name, we created name underscore environment variable, name underscore environment variable. So now all three got compared. So actually we are doing this particular step, guys. So after getting the response, whatever the data we are getting in the response, we have extracted this and compare with the environment variables. So we are extracted this data and comparing with the actual data. Even this data and this ID is also saved in the environment variables. So after getting the response here, we are extracting individual fields, comparing them with the environment variables. So this is how we are doing the validation for get the user request other requests we don't need so especially for get you because whatever data we have used while creating the user after getting the user also the data should be the same that is the point here okay so for that what we have done so at the time of creating the user we are storing all the data in the environment variables so after getting the user we are comparing this data with this environment variable that's how we are doing it so got the idea now, the entire picture. So you need to understand this, most important.
Okay. So main task is done. So now let's proceed further. Okay, so far we have achieved this. So we pass some data to the create user. We capture the ID and the same ID we have passed to the get user and get some response and compare this response with the original data. So this part is completed. Now what else is pending? Update user and delete user. So for update user, delete user, we have to just pass this ID. So now to update the user, not only ID, we should also pass, we should also pass updated name, updated email ID, updated status. So these three fields, again, we have to modify and then we will pass it to the update user. This is the extra step we have to do now, right? So now let's go to the get, uh, let's go to the update user, okay? So in update user, anyway, we are referring the user ID from the environment variable. And now we need to change the body, right? We have to change the body. Again, I want to pass random email address, random name here. So how we can pass random name and random email ID? Same code, we can just copy paste. So in the post request, whatever script we have written to generate random name and random email ID, copy the same thing and go to the put request. And in the put request, before sending the request, we have to change this body, right? So go to pre-request the script and copy paste here. Okay, now these details we have to pass as part of the body. So how we can do this? We can just rename this. Okay, so here, and what is the environment variable of the name here? Email underscore, name underscore, environment variable so that we need to specify okay and uh, then email address for email address this is the environment variable and here we are changing the environment variable values remember that we are changing them so remove this keep that in the double quotations and put this variable that's it so active previously it was an uh, inactive now i'm making it as active now save this request so this is our update user request. So in update user request, what we have done here, we are refer the same ID, whatever we get from post request and uh, the data we have to change. So name, email, status, we have to change. Status, we make it as inactive, but name and email letters, again, we have to generate randomly because if you hard code name and email, it will work only one time. Second time, it won't work. Okay, so we need to again change it we have to again randomly pass the data, name and email, so that we have again created the same script in the pre request script here. This will again create new email address, new username and pass them as part of your body. Okay, so this is your uh, update user request. Done. So after that, what we can do now? Delete user request. Go and close this. Let's go to delete user. So in the delete user, we don't need to do anything. So just pass the user ID. So environment variable, I'm just passing it. That's it. So everything we have done. So all chaining process is completed. So now we need to execute the script. So before executing the script, if you have any questions, please ask. Me. Okay. So now let us try to execute the entire collection. So to execute the collection, what we can do is we can just, now it is dependent. Okay. So we cannot execute specific request now because every request is depend on another request. So we have to execute the entire collection, not individual collection, not individual request. So go click on here and run collection. And just put some delay time here, just two seconds or enough. And then say execute. Yes. So now we can just look at here. Post request is executed successfully. Get request also executed, which is passed JSON fields put request and because in the get request we have done some validation right these fields are exactly the same as these fields are not we have done some comparison so that comparison got passed that's the reason it is giving this and push request is successfully executed delete request also successfully executed and if you want to clearly see what is the data which is generated how it is going to see how it is going to use the data you can clearly see in the console window so open the console window clear this now execute the collection one more time. So run again, click on run again, the same collection will be executed one more time. Now observe four different type of requests we have executed. Now observe this, what is an ID which is generated for post request? Uh, 
uh, it is generated some ID. Just go to the response part here. Under post request, I'm going to response body. And here you can see 4146 ID is generated. Some name is generated, random name, and some random email ID is also generated. So ID is what? 4146. Now go to the get request. In the get request, same ID is used, 4146. And even put request also same thing. In delete request is also same thing. In the put request, we have updated the data, right? So we can just go to put request and see what is the data which is updated. So we can just look at the response body and also see the response body of post request. Post request response body. So now is there any difference here and here? Right. So is there any difference here? This is the original data we have posted. And this is the data which is updated. So at the time of posting also, we are generating random email, random username. At the time of updating the record also, we are generating the random name and a random email ID. And also here, uh, the status is inactive and here the status is active. So the data is got updated. Okay, and the delete request, the same user email is, uh, user ID is used, 4146. So this is how we can create all environment variables and you can do it. And where we can see all the environment variables which are created by our scripts, where we can see the environment variables which are created by our scripts. You can just go here, click on this view button. So here you can see, see this? This is a, a email environment variable name environment variable, user ID environment variable is created. Okay, but at the runtime on the fly, I want to unset these variables because I want to create these variables only at the runtime, at the time of sending the request. And after completion of request, after successful executed, I don't need these variables, right? So I can't delete this. I can delete these variables, right? So where I can delete these variables, where we have to write the script now. So where we have to write script to delete these variables after completion of all the requests where it will complete where it will complete in the delete user after completion of delete user request under test tab we have to unset all the variables right so how to unset all the variables how to delete all the variables pm dot environment dot unset dot unset and here we have to specify just a variable name is enough. So what is the variable names we created? User ID underscore environment that you can specify. Okay, that's it. Only one single statement. And then similarly, I can write one more statement. Sorry. So I can write one more statement. So one is for user ID environment variable. The other is for email underscore environment variable email underscore environment variable sorry just a second email underscore env so that is another environment variable and the last one is what name underscore env so now i'm unsetting all the environment variables after successfully executed my collection now save it okay now let us try to Execute the collection one more time. Run as run collection. Okay, now everything is executed. Now, uh, can we see the uh, variables or not? And there is some error in the console window. Let us see what is an error. Okay, a reference error, user ID under environment is not defined. I think something we have given wrong. Let's see what is the given wrong. Go to the delete request and check the variable name is correct or not. So user ID e environment variable. So this is a user ID environment variable. So we should, I think we should put in the double quotations. Yes. Okay. So we have to keep the double quotations. So then it will able to delete. Now save it and then clear everything in the console window. Then execute all the requests one more time. Run again. Yeah, now everything is successfully executed. Now, can we see the environment variables in this section? Environment variables, it is got deleted. So we don't see anything here. So these two are for created for previous collections, not this collection. So everything is got removed, okay? So this is how we need to create environment variable at the runtime. And once you successfully done, you can remove the environment variables. 
So what is the use of deleting variables at the end? Again, same concept. Unnecessarily, we don't maintain the variables until unless we use it. So where we will use those variables, when we will use those variables, only when you're running the collection. Otherwise, you don't use those variables, right? So unnecessarily, it will occupy a certain amount of space in the memory. And at the same time, your execution will be a little bit slow if you have maintained the variables. So for that reason, we will just create a variable on the fly. And once your request is completed, then delete the variables. Unnecessarily, why you maintain the variables in the section? So not required. Okay, so this is the best practice actually. Instead of uh, hard coding the variables in one place, just create the dynamic, uh, create the variables at the runtime. And once the execution is completed, then destroy the variables. Okay, it will basically free the memory. Okay, so that's the main concept. So this is a concept of chaining process, chaining of APIs. So the response from one API, we can use that as a request for another API. This is called chaining process. Okay. So this is a concept for today. So you have to practice a lot. Okay. I'm not giving any guarantee until unless you practice this, you cannot understand this. You have to practice this. That is the only way you can understand them. Okay. So I will also share clear documentation for this. Okay. So I mentioned everything in the document step by step. And uh, then uh, you guys can understand that. Let me just close this. I will share the document so that you guys can understand better. One second. So everyone is clear how to use Go REST API. So Go REST API. So actual APIs will be like this, guys. OK. So let me just minimize this. So I will share a small document, guys, especially API chaining. So just follow this document. I have created, uh, I have shown you two examples, right? One is for student API, first example. And this is a second example, example to go REST API user. So this is the URL, how to get the token. And uh, then these are the requests we have to send. And this is the picture I have already explained. So go to step-by-step -step format, okay? So for create user, this is the URL you have to use. This is a request body you have to copy. And these are the uh, pre-request script you have to add. And then these are the test script you have to add for post request. For get request, you have to use this is the URL because we are getting this environment variable as a user ID. Then these are the tests you need to add. And for update request, this is the, uh, you, uh, this is the URL and this is the body. And this is a pre-request script. And this is for delete request. I have mentioned everything in step-by-step. -step and go through this document and then practice it. And while using this uh, uh, GoREST API, please create your own token ID. So don't use this token ID, otherwise it will be blocked, okay? So one token ID used by only one person, which is created with my email address and password. So similarly, you can create your own token ID and use it for your EAPI request, okay? So, I'll share this document. Just go to the document and practice multiple times. Then you will be able to understand. So now all the concepts are covered. How to create environment variables, right? How to refer the environment variables, how to get the values from environment variables, and how to pass the data in the URL, how to refer the data in the request body. So all the scenarios are covered in this example. So only thing is you have to practice. Okay, so I'll stop here for today's session. The next session, we will discuss another concept.